Hello. So if you're watching this video, that means that you're interested in knowing why the law of exponents hold. Well, like I said, I already gave like three options that you can live your life with, you know. You just take them as axioms, which is like the lazy way, you know, just they're just true and let's move on. Um you do the calculus route, which again you can look up on your own, or you can just wait for me to uh, do a video on it, because I definitely am gonna do a video on it. But who knows when? And part three, the third, the third, re the third uh, explanation will be yeah, watching these uh, videos I'm gonna make. Now, seeing, seeing, seeing how uh, everything that I wrote up for these videos, it looks like it's gonna be a part one and part two. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot because everything, almost everything, if not everything that I've covered uh, throughout this entire prologue, uh, yeah, everything that we've co that I've covered, we've covered, uh, might come in handy. I mean, we're we're definitely gonna see bijective functions for sure. And again, I don't know if you noticed, but we've been using ax axioms of real numbers a lot. Sometimes they're just kind of in the background. Uh, fractions are gonna come into play. The only thing that I might think may maybe might come into play, maybe not, is the inequalities, which was like part three of the whole axiom. But yeah, everything everything that I've covered, I, I I I made a video of because we are gonna need them. In fact, I I, I didn't just decide to dump a lot of information on you. I I dumped the the very I dumped the bare minimum. Of information so it's a lot of for, for me to call it a bare minimum but it is the bare minimum <laughs> trust me uh, I know that this this prologue series is already bigger than the Lord of the Rings as far as like time wise I mean I, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if, if it is right uh, but it really was the bare minimum <laughs> so if I had to guess uh, this part one is gonna be uh, mainly uh, looking at the structure, at the shape, at maybe the properties of exponential functions and why, since they're going to be bijective, spoiler alert, they give rise to this other set of functions called logarithm functions. On the second part, uh, it's going to be mostly of, okay, you know, I claim I can prove uh, the law of exponents, at least most of them. Well. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna have to make you believe two things, and then from there on, everything else is provable. Uh, I, if you notice from the last video, uh, I kind of already made you believe the first love exponent, the a to the power n times a to the power m equals a to the power uh, n plus m, right? So I mean, I was so desperate in, in making you think, okay, you know, we really want that to be true, so I might as well add an axiom, so that's going to be the one of the things that I want you to just take as true. And then the second, you'll, you'll, you'll see what it is. Uh, well, I, I guess you won't see if you don't watch the next video, so uh, stay tuned. Well, before... <laughs> this 45 minute video turns into a 15 minute video and makes less people want to watch it let's just uh, end the intro and see what the whole fuss is about with exponential functions okay so exponential n logarithmic functions okay so we really we really needed to have the last video before this one especially because you know I'm gonna I'm gonna say okay let's let's try to look at what f of x equals 2 to the power x looks like right okay so I'm saying that uh, it's all the points x y in r2 such that uh, such that y equals 2 to the power x right okay so then let's make an XY table uh, 0, negative 1, negative 2 1, 2 I don't know maybe 3 
Well, yeah, right. If we're gonna figure out how this thing looks like, we gotta plug in points. Really, there's no, no way around that. So two to the power zero is one. Two to the power negative one is one half. Two to the power negative two is one over four. Two to the power one is just two. Two to the power two is four. Two to the power three is eight, right? And again, you can you can plug in more points to like one half, right? Two to the power one half, that just means square root of one half. <sighs> square root of two, which is uh, 1.4142. You know, you can look up in the calculator. Yeah, you can just use a calculator to, uh, uh, you know, figure out the x, y coordinates. I guess you can also use just a graphing calculator, right? But yeah, okay, let's see. Uh, from the from the numbers that we're getting, right? Let's say this is the x-axis. Let's say this is the y-axis. Right? So what are the points there? Negative negative two, comma one fourth. So over here negative two. Let's say this is one. This is two, three, four. Then one fourth would be like down here, right? So close to the ground. At negative one is one half, so so twice as big, but still less than one, right? At zero is one. At one is two. At two is four. Doubles. And at three is eight, right? So, and again, you can plug in one half, you can plug in a bunch of numbers, but you'll see that uh, it's basically going to have this shape. So again, f of x equals two to the power x uh, has this shape, right? Uh, what are what are what are some things that we can say? Well, we can say, for example, that f. Uh, you can plug in any real number, so it goes from the real numbers. But notice that the range is basically positive numbers. And I'm gonna put zero comma infinity. I'm gonna put a parenthesis here because actually, if you notice in this in in this picture, right? Uh, or uh, again, if you, could, you if you could plug in more negative numbers, this this function keeps getting close to the x-axis, but uh, it will actually never cross it. Not only will it, will it never even cross it, it will never touch it. What I'm saying is that uh, there does not exist. So, you know, if you see the x symbol, just cross it. There does not exist an x in the real numbers such that 2 to the power x actually equals 0. You know, for any x in the real numbers, 2 to the power x is never 0. You know, I just said the same thing twice. So what happens is that in this picture, actually, there's supposed to be like a... Um, uh, you could say invisible asymptote. I mean, I think uh, all asymptotes are invisible, right? But yeah, so it's actually like an invisible line here that this thing, this picture, never crosses. Okay, well let's keep let's keep looking at more exponential functions, right? I mean, just looking at one won't won't really do anything, right? So let's see. Uh, let's go g of x. Suppose now we use I don't know. Uh, 3 to the power x, right? So then, let's do some x, y table. You know, if we don't have any technology, 0, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2. So 3 to the power 0 is going to be 1. 3 to the power negative 1 is going to be 1 third. 3 to the power negative 2 is going to be 1 ninth. You know, I'm just going fast because I want this to be a gigantic video. 3 to the power 1 is 3. 3 to the power 2 is 9. Uh, 3 to the power 3 will be 27, right? So, okay, I think we have enough to kind of base our picture. Right, x, y plane. So, let's plot the points. So, when x equals 0, y equals 1. So, right there. And when x equals 1, then y equals 3. When x equals 2, it jumps all the way to 9, which will be up here. Uh, negative 1 is 1 third, and then at negative 2, 
So a ninth, which again closer to the x-axis, right? Okay, so then we seem to be getting this type of shape. And again, so the only difference between this and that is just that this looks steeper. I mean, it, it better looks steeper. I mean, it has uh, bigger y values. Um, well, actually, on the other hand, this thing should uh, gets closer to the x-axis on this side, much more, uh, much more faster than this thing gets close to the x-axis. So you know that's a difference there too, right? Um, okay. Uh, so, I mean, I would say also the same thing, right? Uh, G goes from real numbers to just positive numbers. So what else? I mean, same thing, you know? Uh, 3 of X is never equal to zero for any real number. Hmm. Well, I tried 3, I tried 2. Eh, let's just look at it, right? What happens with 1? Uh, F, G... Uh, let's call this i. i of x is just 1 to power x. Well, this one's going to be a little, uh, hmm, I mean, let's plug, let's plug in points. 0, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2. 1 to the power 0 is 1. 1 to the power negative 1, so that just means 1 over 1, still 1. 1 to the power negative 2, so that just means 1 over 1 squared, still 1. 1 to the power 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1. Well, uh, seems like we didn't really get anything interesting. I mean, let's just plot the points anyways. So, when x equals 0, y was 1. When x equals 1, y was 1. When x equals 2, y was 1. When it was negative 1, it was 1, negative 2, negative 1. So, I mean, it just looks we're getting a, a straight line. Uh, what's interesting about that? Well, uh, I mean, uh, this case, I hmm. so in this case, uh, okay, you can you can plug in any real number, so we can still say that the domain is real numbers. But uh, I mean, you can say the codomain is also positive numbers, but but uh, again, you know, you could just say codomain is real to real numbers. But really, the range, the range of the domain is just one element. It's just one, you know. Okay, let's let's try out some more uh, exponential functions. Uh, let's say j of x equals one half the power x. Well, let's see what happens this time. Uh, zero, negative one, negative two, and two. So one half to power zero. Well, anything to power zero should be one. One half to power one. It's just one half. One half to power two. Well, that's just one half times one half. So top with the top, bottom with the bottom. That's how you multiply fractions. One over four. Uh, so what about one half to power negative one? Well, that that's just gonna be. The multiplicative inverse of one half. So, what more number do you multiply? What number do you multiply to one half to make it equal to one? Uh, well, you know, if you, you can solve this algebraically, but you'll see that the answer is two. So, I guess one thing I just never really said, right, is that if 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 you have a fraction, let's say uh, a over b. I mean, did I say this or did I not say this, right? You, you be the judge, right? So, again, raising it to the power of negative 1 just means what's the multiplicative inverse. So, it, it just means that you would flip it, right? The multiplicative inverse of A over B would just be B over A. But in another way of, of looking at that is that, yeah, you just kind of flip the numbers, right? So, you know, that being said... You know, you have one half, and you look at it. Oh, it's, it's the power negative one. So then it would be the the same thing as. I mean, let me just write it right here. Why not? 
So say one half to power negative one, and I'm just saying, well, the rule seems to be is that you just flip it. So then I fl so now the two is in the top and the one is in the bottom, and two over one is just two. Um, you know, if you have more questions about that, uh, let me know later, right? Um, so what's one half to power negative two? Uh, it's gonna be, I mean, it should be the multiplicative inverse twice. Which is just going to be equal to 2 times 2, which is 4. Again, there's a faster way of coming up with these numbers, which is uh, the whole point. Uh, if you're looking at, you know, yesterday's video, yesterday, the, the previous video, right? Again, if you can always just choose the route that, that okay, I'm just going to uh, believe the, the law of exponents as, uh, as facts, as axioms. And in that case, then, yeah, you can figure out, you know, uh, the fast way of calculating... One half to power negative two. Um, well, let's see. Anyways, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to get stuck in a conversation. Let, let's just see what happens, right? So, what does this? What does this? What does this function look like? So, this is j, j of x, right? So, when x equals zero, y equals one. When x equals one, it's one half. When x equals two, we get one fourth. When x equals negative one, we got a two. And when x was negative 2, we got a 4. Well, it looks to me like now we have this shape. Very similar to basically f of x, right? If anything, it, it just looks like it got flipped through the y-axis. If you compare f of x with j of x, it, it, it should probably look like the exact same thing. It's just that the image got flipped through the y-axis. Alright, I want to look at two more exponential functions before continuing uh, this conversation. So what have we tried so far? We actually, we, we tried basically what happens if, if the base of the exponential function is greater than 1, you know, 2 and 3. We've checked what happens when it's exactly equal to 1, we get a, a straight line. Let's say that we check what happens when a number is between 0 and 1, which just means to indicate that the picture kind of flips through the y-axis. So then let's try what happens if uh, 0 is the base. I don't know. Let's call that uh, h of x maybe, whatever. So h of x equals 0 to the power x, right? Let's see what this thing looks like. Well, let's make x, y table. Uh, 0, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2. <laughs> well, what do you guys think? Um, 0 to the power 0. So, so again, when, when I did say anything, anything to the power 0 is 1, I, I actually, you know, if you go back... Uh, in, and look at yesterday's video. I did, say, I did specify all the numbers except zero. Uh, because, okay, you know, zero to the power one, of course it's zero. Zero squared, just zero times zero. It's just zero, right? So, I mean, look, you, you, you might be looking, yeah, zero to, to any power, it's just going to be zero, right? Uh, but then you also have this other idea. Look, this is what I mean. Zero to any power, you might think, oh, it's zero. But then now you have this other idea that any number to power zero is one. So now we have zero to the power zero. Which one wins over? Does this one win over? Or does this one win over? You know? Uh, so right now, we're just going to say that it's undefined. What's 0 to the power negative 1? Well, that just means 1 over 0. Which is, again, you know, the multiplicative inverse of 0. 0 doesn't have any multiplicative inverse. 1 over 0 really doesn't mean nothing. So it's also undefined. And, of course, that if this is undefined, then 0 to the power negative 2, which just means 1 over 0 times, or 1 over 0 squared, whatever, however you want to look at it, still undefined. So what is this result to? We result to that we have this picture x y, right? Where okay, if 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 any power is let's say positive, 
then the function looks like uh, if x is positive, then the y value seems to be zero, right? So I'm going to use blue this time to indicate this is this is our function. However, we don't know what zero what this function looks like when x equals zero. So I'm going to leave this as an open uh, picture, as an open circle. And not only that, we don't know what it looks like on this side at all either. So it's a weird thing, right? Uh, this function h of x seems to go only from positive numbers. Uh, and again, the, co the coloring really won't matter, but we know that the image is just one element, zero. You know, that's the best. That's the best way we can describe. It. So this is how what this, uh, if you want to call it exponential function, looks like. All right, uh, last one. Well, okay then. What happens is the base. What happens if the base? Of the exponential function is now negative so let's try negative 1 so let's say k of x equals negative 1 to the power x all right let's go again let's try to plug in some some numbers 0 1 2 negative 1 negative 2 negative 1 to the power 0 let's just say that's 1 you know negative 1 to the power 1 negative 1 Negative 1 to the power 2, that means negative 1 times negative 1. Well, a negative times a negative will prove this positive one. Right? Uh, 1 to the power negative 1. Well, what do you, what do you just say? You just uh, flip it, right? But 1 itself is 1 over 1. So 1 over 1 to the power negative 1 is still just 1 over 1, which is 1. Oh, but I was saying negative 1, right? So even if you flip it and you and you put this negative here, well, actually, it, it comes out that you can just pull out negatives from the bottom. You know, I didn't really. That's actually in one of the thumbnails for my videos that I'm asking. I, I I was really trying to ask, can you can you pull out like a negative out of the bottom out of, out of the denominator? Um, well, the like the answer is yeah, but it it doesn't have. It, I guess you can say that it doesn't really have anything to do with the. Uh, less than and greater than signs which is why maybe that's why you, you maybe have ignored it but okay so we seem to be getting one negative one one negative one and then one negative one, negative one to the power negative two is going to be just one over negative two square negative one square so it's going to go back to being positive one okay so here's where it gets the most tricky because I mean, notice that I always just plugged in the same x values, right? So when x equals zero, uh, y was one. When x equals one was negative one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So again, I'm going to use the blue. Right. So negative one to the power x when x equals zero is a positive one. But when x equals 1, it's a negative 1, positive 1 at 2, negative 1 at 3, positive 1 at 4. At negative 1, it was again a negative 1, positive, negative, positive. Right? But that this really isn't the complete picture. I mean, you know, what happens if x is 1 half? What's negative 1 to power 1 half? Well, now you're asking what's the square root of negative 1 half? And while you might, while you might want to call it uh, that it's the imaginary number i, and you're fine to do that, I mean, the the fact is that this is not a real number. So, and again, the x y plane is really just the uh, r cross r. So, how can we plot that? How can we plot? How can we plot the imaginary number i in this picture, right? Let's let's for the, for the moment just say that we can't. So, for example, uh, we we cannot plug in one half into this exponential function. It's I guess it's not in the domain, right? But one third is is possible. I mean, what's what, negative one to the power of one third would just be what's the cube root of negative one? Meaning, what number do you multiply three times? To itself to get negative one. Well, actually, negative one works just fine, right? Since negative one cubed equals negative one, then you can definitely say that 
the cube root of, of negative 1 is negative 1. So for example, if 1 third is right here, then you can say, yeah, it's negative 1. 1 fifth will be the same idea, 1 seventh, 1 nine, 1 th one eleventh, right? So you might see, okay, there's a bunch of points here, but at the same time, that's not the end of the story because you could have negative one to the power, let's say, four fifths. So that just means that if that's the fifth root of negative one, so I raised the power four. Okay, yeah, the, the fifth root of negative one that's just, is going to come out to be negative one, but then now we have negative one to the power four, that's going to be a positive one. So, for example, uh, yeah, four fifths will be a positive one over here, and you know there's going to be a lot of points that kind of are similar. So what if this picture looks like? I'll be honest. Uh, yeah, it's a mess, right? How could you how could you really draw a picture of this? I can't even tell you what the domain is. I don't know. I don't know how properly uh, to define the domain if we're going from real numbers to real numbers. So what happens when you, when you have negative numbers as an exponential, uh, as the base of your exponential, then you, you just get problems. That's kind of what I said too about the law of exponents, you know. Uh, it's going to turn out that the law of exponents uh, work with positive bases for sure. And what do you do with negative bases? Well, that's kind of up to uh, your discretion, you know, like... Uh, most of the time, if you're in school, they're gonna give you like num, you know, natural number powers anyways. So if it's even, then negative one to an even power is positive one. Uh, if it's odd, negative one to an, an odd number is still gonna be negative one. And you can kind of work backwards as well with asking about a cube root of negative one or a fifth root of negative one, so on and so forth, right? Okay, so what's the point of this whole discussion, right? Well, one thing that I kind of want to show you is the following, and, and again, uh, so if, let's say now that for any number A, that's a real number, right? Uh, let's say that F uh, subscript A of X we're gonna say that's just the exponential a to the power x, meaning you know for two, for two to the power x is f two, subscript two, so on and so forth, right? Okay, so what 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 I want to say about these these like uh, family of, of functions, if you will? Well, I want to say uh, the following: if a is greater than zero and not equal to 1 then this function a to the power x is bijective okay so I guess I I was trying not to uh, scroll back but I guess I'm gonna have to right because I really want to make this point so. Um, so again, you know, look at this, look at this, and look at that, right? And this is the only reason why I'm excluding a equal a a being equal to exactly one, right? But if it's so, if if a is greater than if a is strictly greater than one, you, you can kind of guess that it's going to have this shape. You know, the bigger a is, the steeper this will be. That's that's you know that's going to be the only distinction, right? And then if a happens to be between 0 and 1, then it's going to have this shape, that it goes down from left to right, you know? Uh, so in so if you look at either this case or this case, right, what I'm saying is that, okay, are these functions? Well, yeah, they're functions. I mean, you can, uh, every, everything in the domain, which is going to be the real numbers, uh, goes to something because that's kind of that's kind of basically what the previous videos uh, whole discussion was about that you can plug in any number into as a as a power, right? So they're definitely functions, and well, are are they well defined? They're well defined because yeah, all these functions pass the vertical line test, right? So vertical line test. I mean, even this one, even the one to the power x passes the vertical line test, right? So 
so far you should believe in that they are indeed functions, right? Okay, but why are they bijective? Well, first, remember what I said, you know, uh, the, the, the codomain you can adjust by just adjusting it to be the range of the function. So the really important part is that it, are they one to one? Well, one to one just means passing the one to one just means passing the vertical line test. Do they pass the vertical line test? They do, believe it or not, right? I mean, actually, the, the okay, this one doesn't, right? That's why I'm excluding the one. So this one doesn't pass the vertical line test. This is not one to one. It's actually horribly not one to one. Uh, but yeah, right, even this one again passes the vertical line test. The reason why they definitely pass the vertical line test, again, you know, proof by picture is not a real proof. Well, as you can also see, you know, uh, this function seems to be what we call an increasing function, meaning as the x values get bigger, the y values go bigger, right? So, uh, so and again, it's not just an increasing function, it's like a strictly increasing function, meaning that the you know again the the bigger the x values are the bigger the y values are which kind of also implies that no y value is repeated and that really is the 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 crux of what one to one means that no y value is ever repeated so yeah oh well, again I, I guess this, I should clarify so when a the base a is greater than one then the function seems to be strictly increasing whereas if the base is between zero and one then it's the opposite. The function is strictly decreasing. I mean, what does it decreasing mean? It means that as the x values get bigger, the y values get lower. So again, the onto part is just again, yeah, just just adjust it so that so that the, the that the codomain is just a range. And yeah, right. So I think that's not controversial, right? The statement that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm putting on you. Again, I'll I'll show it to you again. So any all these functions a to the power x, uh, as long as a is greater than one but not equal to one, I mean greater than zero but not equal to one, then yeah, every single one of these functions is going to be bijective. Again, I guess for now, just just proof by picture. If you really uh, want to be like that, right? Okay. Well, what does that mean then? If so, if if every single one of these type of functions is bijective, then every single one of these functions has to have an inverse, right? So there's gonna exist. So there's gonna exist for every a, right? Some f inverse of a that goes the other way around. So that is gonna go from positive numbers as a domain, and the range is gonna be real numbers. Uh, but but not just that, such that uh, f a inverse of you know a of x is just equal to x. Well, at this point, I have to, I have to def I have to sh introduce you what these functions are. Uh, define uh, for every a g a of x to be the following log <laughs> that's kind of wrote it weird log let me let me write this is kind of getting to me so we're gonna write this as log like you know log but then i'm gonna make a little subscript again for a of x so we're gonna define these functions log a of x to kind of be the inverses so if i'm gonna call it a function i have to tell you how do you, where does each input go to which output, right? So I'm going to define this log base a of x by saying that log base a of b is equals to the number c, meaning that the input b goes to the output c if and only if, you know, this is the same thing as if I write iff, if and only if a to the power c is b. So B is going to be sent to C only if this is if this statement is true. A to the power C is B. If if that looks uh, confusing, yeah, you're a normal person. It should be confusing the first time you see it. So let me let me uh, give you an example. So an example is, for example, log base two of eight equals three because I, I guess I should have written because because 
2 to the power 3 equals 8. Alright? So again, if you ever look at logarithms and you're like, ah, they're kind of weird, right? I didn't even move the camera so that it actually focuses. Right? So we're saying log A of B equals C if and only if A to the power C equals B. If, if, that, if that's, that's just going to be how it is, right? And if you ever get confused, then look at, back at this example, for example. Log base 2 of 8 equals 3 because, to, you know, again, let me even just erase this thing. Log base 2 of 8 equals 3 because 2 to the power 3 equals 8, right? So just from that, you know, what would be log base 2 of 16? You know, well, uh, 16 happens to be a nice power of 2. 16 is going to be 2 to the power 4. Right? So then log base 2 of 2 to the power 4 has to be 4. That's kind of the rationale. That's kind of what, what we're saying right here. That the f inverse of a to the x is just going to be x. Log base 2 of 2 to the power 4 should just be 4. Again, so that, yeah, that's a 4, right? Okay, what am I saying in general? I'm saying in general that two things are true because again, this is what we had the whole conversation about inverse functions. So the two things that are going to be true are this. Log base a of a to the power x is just going to be equal to x. And also, a to the power log base a of x is also going to be equal to x. Again, be, why? Because they're, these two are basically inverse functions. Right? That's, that's what we mean by f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. This only ha if, if these two things only happen when they're inverses of each other. So, that implies log base a of a to the power x equals to x and a to the power log base a of x also equals to x. Which is why it makes more sense again log base 2 of 2 to the power 4 is 4. Alright, I mean, I'm just gonna say it one more time, right? So log base 2 of 8 is 3 because 2 to the power 3 is 8. Do you see how this, you know, say that, that I change this to a 4, which means I change the 8s to 16s, right? So do you see now how log base 2 of 16, well if I just rewrite 16 as 2 to the power of 4 from the get-go, then the answer has to be 4. Um, Alright, so I, I think, you know, again, I don't want to make this into a gigantic video. I think for part 1, I kind of cover what I wanted to cover with the, with the functions, you know. Um, I mean, interesting enough, right? Let's say that you that you look at log base two of three, right? And you might think, well, three is definitely not a power of two, and 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 you you would I would say you you usually <laughs> in a regular day I would tell you yeah that's correct three is definitely not a power of two. However, if we go back and look at you know again the picture of 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 the function f of x equals two to the power x, three is definitely a y value right in the range which implies that there should be some real number x so that 2 to the power x equals 3 what that mystery number is is exactly the value of log base 2 of 3 you know um, so it's, it's a very interesting thing because again when you say you know if, if I told you 5 is a multiple of 2 at first, you should your number is supposed to be like no, well no, because five, uh, you know, two times a, 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 a whole number can never be equal to five, right? So then you break the meaning of that and you say, well, actually, five is equal to two times two point five, and yeah, two point five is not a whole number. Uh, so again, you know, when, when people say uh, three goes into six, it's it's because uh, three times a whole number equals to six, right? But when you when you start saying two goes into five because five equals two times two point five, it kind of breaks the whole meaning, right, of what uh, being a multiple of is. Well, you know, logs kind of do that too. You know, kind of in a way, is this is saying that actually three is 
a, 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 a multiple is a power of two. Why? Because three equals two to the power log base two of three. See how sneaky that is? I'm telling you, log base two of three is a number. And, and because of that, three equals log base two of three. This is the mystery number that, that makes three a power of two. Of course, that's just breaking the entire meaning of what being a power of another number is, right? But that's 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 math, right? Uh, again, I don't know. I, I don't know why I felt like I had to give you this mini rant. Because again, I really don't want this video to to be any bigger. So, I don't know if uh, you know if you have any complaints about anything I said, leave it in the comments, right? Because again, I'm kind of hey, saying that three is a power two. That sounds very controversial. So. Or if there was something else along this video that you want to talk about, maybe this. Yeah, just leave a comment. Also, don't forget also to like and subscribe. And like I said, I'll just end this video right now before it gets even bigger. Uh, see you in the next one. Okay, I actually want to uh, show you this while it, it's still hot in your brain, right? Uh, I just introduced you what uh, this function's logarithms are, right? So let's actually look, see what they look like. Uh, before ending the video so for example f of x was 2 to the power x so then f inverse of x is going to be log base 2 of x right well how do you how do you figure out the picture of an of a inverse function well you, all you're supposed to do is kind of uh, flip the x y coordinates so if you look back at the video right if you flip the, the coordinates, we end up with this. One, zero, two, one, four, two, eight, three, right? And then one half was negative one, one four was negative two, right? Um, so let's see what this picture looks like. Now keep in mind that since f was from real numbers to positive numbers, right? then log is going to be the opposite, right? So when I draw this picture, I'm actually just going to... I'm actually just going to worry about the right side, you know, quick... I guess we call it uh, quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, if I remember correctly. Anyways, alright, so 1, 0, uh, 2, 1, Okay, three, four, barely a two, five, six, seven, eight, four, barely the number three, right? And then likewise, one half will be negative one, and then one fourth will be negative two, right? So then we're getting that the picture has this shape. So log base two of x looks to have this shape and a little quick note is that in the same way that log, uh, exponentials had like a asymptote uh, they had a, they had a, a horizontal asymptote which was just the x-axis well now this one has a vertical asymptote where the y-axis is basically okay so what else did we draw we draw I think uh, g of x was 3 to the power x, right? So then g inverse of x is going to be log base 3 of x. And again, let's just see uh, what the picture looks like. So we're just going to re reverse the coordinates. Uh, 1 ninth was negative 2, 1 third was negative 1. Uh, 1 was 0, 3 was 1. And I mean, if I mean, you know, three to power two, it's gonna be nine, right? Like you can figure it out backwards. So let's plot these points. Yeah, let's see right here, right? Okay, so one zero again. Uh, two, three, and a one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. It's really not to scale, right? Whatever. So that's just barely for the two. 
On the other hand, write one third was for the negative one, and then one ninth for the negative two. So okay, kind of the same shape again. So what was so the only other one that was um, bijective? Yeah, that's the word. Was um, I forget right? J of x was one half of x. So then J inverse of x is going to be log base one half of x. Again, which is flip the x y's. So negative two, negative zero, one, two. So this for one will be one half, one fourth, one half to the power of zero is one. This goes to two and a four, right? Let's see what this looks like. Okay, one zero. You know, not surprising again because in the same way that all so I don't know if you notice all the exponentials uh, crossed at zero one, which means that all the uh, logarithms are gonna cross at one zero, right? Uh, okay, one half one, and then one fourth two, and then one two four negative one. One, two, three, four, for negative two. So this one now just seems to have this shape. Okay, so I just wanted to end it here since, again, since the video started with me drawing the exponential functions, then the video should end with me drawing the uh, logarithm functions, right? Basically, if the base is, if the base of the logarithm is greater than one, it's gonna have th this shape. But if the base is between zero and one, it's gonna have this shape. Okay, now I'll for sure end it there, which now I just made my video even bigger. But yeah, so the, so in the next video we're gonna pick up uh, the the most important part about me explaining, you know, the law of exponents or like why sh you should believe them, because the logarithm functions uh, come with very special properties so we'll, we'll get to those properties next time see you later